y'all y'all want to get a little happiness in your life. I understand that, yeah, like, and this ain't the place. Like, we're sorry that you don't have any serotonin chemicals, but that's on your fucked up genetics. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, you can't not get upset um, because you can't make it through an episode of a freaking podcast without like, laughing or having fun, right? Like life ain't fun, right? Life ain't fun, dude. Laughing, life's actually pretty bad right now. <laughs> not to be cynical, but life is not fun. It's not grand. Yeah, so no. Like we don't give a fuck about you, party and niggas. Yeah, yeah. Look like, it up. You can know what party and means. And and, and y'all probably said, what is the dark side? The dark side is y'all better learn some dark shit. And right now, the dark shit is this nerd culture shit is a fucking cancer, man. It's for real. fucking destroying black men, black men, for real. And black girls. A lot of black girls, they lost in their ways. They're going full blown career boo. Like, straight up. They you don't know, you know, see black real boos, black female real boos somewhere. They're all career boos. They, they even, the, even the real f- black female real boos are a little more mellow out than the fucking career boos. Man, they, they be all on that shit. Like, we got these nigga nerds out here who cooning and thinking cooning is the thing. All because y'all think it's some. A uh, way to get you like some I don't know some dick or to get you some goddamn white girl pussy, but that shit ain't gonna work over here. We ain't for the serious talk about some motherfucking LGBTQ bullshit. We're not for sit here and big up some Democrats or some Republicans or none of that shit. We ain't on none of that shit. We all about black empowerment and black motherfucking first. If that make you feel bad or upset or you don't like that, we're saying that we are better than these white nerds. Get the fuck on. Go home. You right here, home. Stay off our page Right You don't need to be on it Don't be upset That The nerd culture Is not geared And made for you None of this shit is Actually Here's the most Even more real Here's more darker Than that shit None of that shit matters Nah You don't need to watch No TV shows No watch no anime You don't have to do None of that shit You can just straight up Be about your business And you wouldn't be Griping and complaining While you're so poor well, you don't have enough Cause your ass Too busy Doing all this dumb shit I'm gonna ask to you right now Mark Zuckerberg Ain't going home Watching motherfucking A Netflix marathon Or some shit He ain't playing Fucking Zelda or Madden The fuck He's not on Facebook scrolling <laughs> <laughs> he, he is not on a shit That he stole Like like that The fuck uh, do you, uh, Y'all get it Real men don't play Y'all heard that before That's real shit but y'all think, oh man, uh, all war, all what was that term? All work and no play makes a dull boy. Some shit, ain't yeah. that some shit? Yeah, that was made by a white boy. <laughs> and yeah, you do got relaxing shit, but you can't be relaxed all the time. Man, you can be relaxing on a. You can do business work on vacation. No, no, no. It's no time to relax. Yeah, I done that many times. So I went to Amicons. When I had that time, <laughs> I'm fucking writing the next Nelson story nerd, or I'm just the fuck. Do my budget. <laughs> this is a goddamn um, business trip, man. Like when I was to Denver last year, like for like two or three hours, I was watching Greg Condone and taking notes on his. I forgot what episode was, but I was taking notes. I could have gone out and smoke a blunt because you know it's we movie, but I was like, man, this is the this is the probably the last time around I can have some peace where I can be inspired to and get some work done. So I took advantage of that shit. Yeah. Well, a lot of these, a lot of y'all just think that everything's supposed to be so entertaining, so uh, gripping. Like, we got to be talk, We got to be so cheerful and happy and upbeat. Okay, life ain't happy and upbeat. Y'all got to get over that. Y'all straight up do. None of that shit matters. None, this shit, this podcast don't matter if y'all really, we can keep it 100. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Like, what really matters is being black first and empowering our black our black nerd friends, for real. Because a lot of y'all black nerds, man, y'all lost out here. And y'all need to be waking up and trying to build some shit for y'all goddamn self before you fucking 30 goddamn five and you still don't got no damn nothing. No fucking car, no home, no girlfriend. She had never been in a single relationship, never had a single friendship. <laughs> Shit. The only friendships never anime nut, nut in it, bitch. <laughs> right. The only friendships are fucking anime. Anime figure. Bigger rings. The fuck? Yo, your only friendship is fucking being anonymous online, talking to another anonymous online people. Hiding like a cobra because you know you use your real name and picture talking shit. And you get caught up. You're going to get caught up. And circle jerking a damn TV show that ended a fucking decade ago. 
Now motherfuckers are circle jerking, circle jerking two shows that ended two decades ago. Firefly. <laughs> Or you become a loser who hang around other losers bitching about women online all the damn time. Fucking red pill bullshit. I mean, that's never been my mentality to ever be on the internet like that. I tell people all the time, man, I don't know how you can be on the internet all day. I really, I, even, even when I was a kid, I had the internet. And all I did was like, I give them that shit, find what I need, and get the fuck off. Like, I don't understand how someone can be on a computer all day, Facebook all day, YouTube all day. I don't understand that. YouTube, I understand because you can just throw something in your ear and just listen to some shit. But I don't understand how motherfuckers can just be on a computer all day. Just on Twitter all day. Posting all day. Like, you know that show how cornball your life is. Favorite characters. Uh, Edgelord. 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 Okay. Edgelord and Edgelord. Okay. Burn Detta. Burn Detta, yeah. Hubert. Hubert. Even though he's been talking big shit about you, bro, ain't it? Fine, go on that shit. This nigga talking big shit about you, though. Talking big shit. But, but I did feel him on that, because he, he did try to, like, G-check goddamn. Yeah, buddy, in the game, like. I'm like, what the fuck? Because I didn't get, get that conversation yeah, until like, later. Like, what the fuck? Like, like I said, like, if I was in the game, mm-hmm. I would have got a spell for, for the Black Eagles. Because checking him, like, you doing all this shit for that guard. Is she getting some pussy? Some ass? Some head? And who, who, who asked him that? Because yeah, this is a support conversation with someone like, uh. I think Dorothea. I think so. She was like, why are you pining for this girl? And you ain't even trying to, like, have sex with her type shit. Like, oh, well, it's not about that. I'm about serving for her and I'll do anything for her. You know, you could get an for for him and her. So, I mean, they do probably think she fuck. Who? Edgar and... They're old, they probably old friends, probably. Edgar and Hubert. <laughs> so, I mean, they, I mean, they really have an to get so they might would, fuck. Would that make your jaw drop if they cut away to somebody fucking and firing them? <laughs> All you hear is the squeaking in the bed and support status going up. <laughs> I mean, shit. Fuck yeah, man. That'll be fuck no. that that will fuck people up based on that shit. It's a secret uh, conversation where you can uh, dry hump uh, burn data. But you gotta be careful you get rug burn. Christ. <laughs> Rope burns for real, nigga. Jesus, you can dark, man. He dark over here, man. God damn. <laughs> it's all good words because I, like I said, I'm, you pretty far in. Yeah, you are, yeah. Don't spoil it with me. I want to learn more. I'm only on C support. Right? Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, Mari, Mar- Marianne. Uh, Mar- Marlena? No, the girl with the blue hair that's like, she's like, got like back to the highs. And she's like, talk about the, the, like this. And like, this like, nigga, I'm playing the Japanese. This nigga using English dub on me. I, I'm, a, I'm a sub nigga. <laughs> uh, who are you talking about? You talking about the, the, the Marianne, high end? Marianne. Marianne. You talking about the, the high priestess lady with the green hair? No, blue hair. Blue hair. Yeah, actually, picture. Marianne. Marianne. Yeah. Blue hair. Like you seen her before. What are you talking about? This girl. Marianne. Oh, I thought her yeah. name was. Her, her name is. Oh, that's how you say her name. I don't know. Maria Ann. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. I just, I don't, I don't know how I was saying it in my head. But yeah, I know her. I, 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 she cute as hell. I want to recruit her, but I don't know her weaknesses and stuff, so I don't want to mess with her. I'm trying to recruit her. Okay. Like, her back's always fuck up. Okay, I don't know, so don't tell me. Because I, uh, I, I might pull at you and do a two run to this damn <laughs> game, for real. Uh, not going to say much, but like, and the comments, one of the things I like about the game is like, so you find out that Maury has depression and she's also suicidal. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that's that because mm-hmm. there is a huge story with her. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, other favorite characters. Who's your favorite characters? Sorry. Oh, Harry Kirker? Yeah, you see, you stop it. Um, you stop it. Uh, Casper, Casper. Boxer. Oh, yeah, yeah, the dude, yeah. I want to keep him in boxing. This motherfucker asking me to, oh no, he just asked me to go full blown boxing. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, I'll keep you on that because I need a gauntlet, nigga, for even though you need a long range. I, I want uh, basically I keep every character with at least one long range, oh, one here, like one, one um, short range. Like you gotta have at least two. Like I don't give a fuck what you want to specialize in, motherfucker. You, you gotta have at least a long range ramp for each character. Yeah, you know, man, man. I swear to God, cause like um, you was there when yeah. I denied someone to a different thing and they like didn't like this. Shit. I'm like, oh well, well, fuck you then. Yeah. I, I need you doing two things. What the fuck? Cause you know, at the end of each week, you know, you get like a bonus up type shit, which uh, I, I play. I use that shit to my advantage. I like. Uh, like during our class uh, instruction and shit, I'll level them up just to a point where I know by the end of the week it'll go over yeah. to like B rank, C rank type shit. That's what I do too. It's like if I know like they're gonna match up on that skill level, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And yeah. you basically name everybody in Black Eagles. You just basically name everybody in Black Eagles, basically. Yeah. Everybody in Black Eagles and shit. Also, like um, Sly. 
You don't like Fernand? Fernand? Yeah. He's cool. Yeah, he he cool. He uh he is handsome to everybody though. <laughs> yeah, yeah but I think he was uh sorta of cool. No, him him and um Edgar don't like each other. Oh boy. It's two it's a, I think it's Hubert and somebody else. Hubert and Lionheart don't like each other. Ooh, boy. Hey. I like the the Lindo Hart guy. He's freaking great. I love his character. Oh, he's a favorite character. The lazy, uh, lazy bookworm. Lazy bookworm. Dude, I feel so attacked by his character because it's like, like, he's like. Yeah, he study like a motherfucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he can slacks. And that was, I, was, I was like that in school. Like, I. Mm-hmm. Like. I know I can do that shit, but I don't feel, I don't feel like doing it because it didn't answer, answer me. Same here, man. Same here. Hell yeah, I like that guy. Who was part of the team? Um, you don't like Petra? Petra? Oh, she's cool. No, I love Petra. This is my <laughs> girl. I love her. It sounds like, in the uh, English, does she, she sounds like Starfire. Uh, Starfire? Yeah, for, um. Really? Oh, man. For, um, Titan, t- 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 because, you know, she's like a foreigner. Mm-hmm. So, her grammar is all. Oh, uh, yeah, you can see in Japanese. Yeah, I don't know that. I just, I just know that she's not good with the English type Yeah. Thing. So hell yeah, I like her. Uh, she got a good voice act, uh, voice actress. Uh, the Japanese thing it sounds really. Good. Oh, see, Petra looks savage because she's a hunter. Who? Petra. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When, when she first kills a human, it's like oh, it's like like killing humans, like killing animals. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like she did, she did not care. Oh fuck yeah, I love her. Um, uh, Dorothea. Dorothea. Don't like her. I, like I love her. her. Okay, I love her. I love but her. But I got so many jokes about her. Like, but she uh, is a hoe. No, she, she might get her. Uh, no, I just got. I guess I had to build her up, but she wasn't that strong at first. But she, I got her in um, swords and got her magic. Yeah, I think yeah. Sometimes yeah, my Dorothy of magic. She's like twenty five in magic stats, mm-hmm. and she gets like one shot at a lot of motherfuckers. Yeah, she. That's what you're doing, me. She's one shot at motherfuckers. I'm like, damn, her Edelgard and uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, her ain't a guard beam. And Bird Daddy, boy, they be getting criticals off. But see, this is what I didn't get. Uh, what I did get, I just didn't realize, like, by the, the support conversation you yeah. have with people, the higher they are, the better you do when you sit next to them. So, like, I was wondering, like, why the fuck Bird Daddy's going so hard with you next to uh, Edgelord? So I'm like, oh, shit, that's why. Because, like, because cause I've been putting them together a lot. Yeah, I thought it was like, okay, it's it like because I'm playing on normal, it's giving like a more easier time. Mm-hmm. But I forgot, you know, and finally, with the support system, it does boost your critical hits rate. Dude, man, she be fucking shit up next to her. I'm like, damn, like, okay, well, keep them two together. Got to the one part where, like, they talk about uh, Biolith's mother dying and shit like that. So I'm like, nigga, you nigga, that's the bitch that came from space, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't fucking know. Uh, also, I'm not trying to be funny, but they were ruining the game. It was like, uh, the end is like, it was, Bi- ali- it was aliens. Bi- face alien. It was aliens. <laughs> All the whole time. <laughs> you wake up and you in fucking the real world. <laughs> I'm mad as fuck. And, I'm so and Sakurai's just looking in your eyes like, hey, hey. Got a job for you. Go <laughs> <laughs> back to Bala. Uh, I'm not trying sure, sure to be funny to anyone who has a condition, but is it me or is, is Bala autistic? Hmm. Like I'm like I'm not trying to troll. Like, yeah, like her, bro. Yeah, I can. I ain't gonna say that, but yeah, I can see where you can get that from. Because she don't like she hardly express emotions. Like, nigga, that's a, that's a main NPC character. NPC, it's a main. No, 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 that's, no, no, that's no, no, like, no, 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 no. Because like in the like in the actual game, like people saying, no, you know, we smile, like have emotions so much. Yeah, they're making fun of us because she's a a, a a character that we're playing. They're they're being meta. No, no, I don't think it's like meta. Cause like, okay, pass them towards the the little laugh. Like in other time against they they laugh they have emotions but like, hey, okay. like she they like, going up with that thing too you don't think that you some deep huh yeah she gonna turn out be a retarded with a damn <laughs> helmet on her head and drooling and shit <laughs> uh, hey I'm I'm bothered <laughs> this nigga want her to go full retard huh okay all right let's put the helmet on her head <laughs> with the Black Eagles logo on it. I'm co- that's what my, that's been my cosplay. I'm gonna be retarded bad violent. That should be a new cosplay thing. A retarded version of every character. I'm a retarded Dante. You, you you put the gun up your butt or some shit, you know? <laughs> Shoot, fuck gender swapping, nigga. That's two retarded versions of uh, Goku. Oh, well, Goku already really retarded. Let's go, man. Nigga, do it. Go, I'm sorry, anybody mentally challenged. 
No, but like, like, but like I think she's, I think she is autistic. Cause this like, nigga be looking at all fucked up shit about these damn characters. He ain't saying one nice thing about not a single one of these characters. <laughs> you heard me loving everybody. This nigga talking about, yeah, she, she's fag. She's Dorothy is, hearted. Dorothy, uh, Dorothy is a hoe. All right. He's talking shit about every character. You don't love nobody, do you? I do. Who you love? <laughs> Burn that up. Burn that up. Don't take my girl. That's my girl. That's my girl. That's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> I claimed her first. Oh, God, I take Dothia. Uh, who? Dothia. Dothia. Okay, you can take her. Shoot. She might leave you for a bitch, but yeah. <laughs> You should have some fun while she's singing while she's on you. <laughs> she's a good singer. Um, uh, but no bullshit. Every girl in this game, damn game is cute. It's not. I don't think it's not. Only one that I really don't think is cute is uh, the little green hair girl. She alright, but uh, the, the girl got kidnapped. Oh, her. Flam, Flam. 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 Flip off. <laughs> you know? A fish eater. You know, shit. Yeah, fish eater, right? A fish contest. It's like, yeah, I want a fish competition. Like, little bitch, I'm trying to do something. I ain't trying to have a fish competition and shit. The fuck? These fishes ain't doing shit for me. But raising my teacher rank, which actually helps. Yeah, it does. <laughs> shit, that in that garden. Garden and shit, too. I don't draw anything. If I did, believe me, my brain would would have fell by the wayside a long time ago. <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately, I've been in company of wonderful artists uh, who have helped uh, develop and design the characters. Now, do I have input? Of course. You know, I basically sometimes I'll attempt to, to trace some things and design some things on an elementary level just to give the artist some idea of the direction I would like to go. Okay. And then they take my feeble illustrations and embellish them. Now, I always give a shout out to my good friend. Um, his name is Mishindo Kumba. Uh, I consider him to be one of the best foundation of black American artists on the planet. So if you don't know about more, if you don't know about that brother, Google him, um, Mishindo, yeah, uh, Mishindo Kumba. And he okay. has been um, a close friend and colleague for numerous years, and he has helped develop Purge's look over the past 20 plus years. Oh, wow. um, yeah. and, uh, and, he has an um, Instagram, right? He should have an Instagram, yes, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's good. He's really yeah. good. I see. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll follow him on Instagram, too. Yeah, he's, he's been around for, for a while now, so he, he's definitely not a novice. Uh, but I always give him a shout-out because um, he has done wondrous for keeping my brands relevant as far as look. Mm -hmm. And he has the unique ability to pull from the African experience with the connection to the ancestors. He is in touch with who we are as a people. And his, and his, his historical understanding uh, is is beyond uh, any that I've witnessed over the years that I've been in the business. So um, I many times lean on him to bring a lot of my ideas to fruition. So I just want to give that brother a, a shout out mm -hmm. uh, because he, he's very responsible for a lot of the looks and the high level of quality that you've seen uh, in some of the products uh, that I've shared with you. And how long have you been working with him? Um, almost 30 years. Wow. It's, 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 it's been a while. It's been okay. a while. Okay, all it's right. Been a while. That's what's up. It's been a while. And that's it's a lot a of black people need. You Sometimes you, you can do stuff on your own, but sometimes you really you need do. need somebody. You need somebody. You do need help. Like, it's no, nothing wrong with asking for help. A lot of black people are afraid of that. Well, again, isn't that what the conference was really all about to a degree? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, yes. understanding and networking and... Mm -hmm. And do what we can to elevate each other because, you know, I have my talents, you have yours, and mm -hmm. so on. And if we're not able to come together to make sure that each of us is able to keep our lights on, <laughs> I know, right? You know, that, that's what the that's what the whole idea of collective, you know, what I consider calling collective economics is all about. You know, um, so that's. That's basically my philosophy, and and uh, I, that's why I was so happy to be at the conference to be able to experience that firsthand. After the power nights, um, what, what did you do after that? Well, that was purge, which which I mentioned. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, then after that, um, family took over. Uh, I got married, five kids, <laughs> so I took a hiatus from the comic book biz for a while, and I ventured into children's books. Oh, uh, but but again, you know, that's money my, makers too. Well, it is, it is. Um, but I would say my mission 
and philosophy has never changed. I've never wavered, which is to produce anything that I do to produce black characters that uh, present children with education that can help them to be better people, uh, inwardly and outwardly. And in this particular case, it was it was both. Uh, again, with Machindo Kuma, uh, he helped bring in I, one of my ideas, which I'm quite proud of, uh, which is called Charles the Chef. Welcome, kids, to the show. I'm Charles the Chef, and this is Let's Get Cooking. Are you ready for good food? Are you ready for magic and adventure? Then prepare for something wonderful and learn about being healthy along the way. Now, let's get cooking. Was a, uh, a character uh, that we co-created together to help children understand the importance of eating healthy uh, to avoid um, childhood obesity. Uh, Charles the Chef has a magic hat that has its origins in Africa uh, through, uh, uh, through an original African spirit, uh, which, in, uh, which in, inhabits the hat. So Charles has magic to create porters, to go to different countries, to learn about different recipes, uh, different herbs, in which he takes back to his restaurant and serves um, his customers with healthy food that can help them heal from the inside out. So Charles the Chef is a, is a wonderful story about his adventures with his daughter, his wife, who's from Nigeria, um, and the little town that they live in called Darton. And so after I took a hiatus, you know, I spent a, a few years, almost six years, um, working and building that brand uh, to help children just understand that they can have the power or be empowered to eat healthy by being knowledgeable about the food they consume. And with children who are innocent and very impressionable, um, personally, I feel that as a creator, anything that I put in their head should be something that can help them be productive, mm -hmm. not contrarian in, in their behavior uh, or, or disobedient in their behavior. It should be something that can help them think better, uh, can help them discern better better um, in order to make better choices, uh, but at the at the end of the day, I want them to leave them with the understanding that you have the ability and the power to, to make the best choices possible with the best information that you can possibly receive. And in this particular case with Charles the Chef, it, it goes back to, you know, well, what should I eat? Uh, should I eat this Snicker bar? Or is it best for me to eat this apple? Well, if you don't know what attributes or nutrients an apple has in order to improve your health, most likely you're going to go for the Snickers bar because that's the easiest, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the kind of things that I do my best to employ in any content that I produce for our people uh, because we are not being told, not only our history, but we're not being told what can help us to be the best we can be mentally, physically, and of course, spiritually as well. And it's up to us as content creators to do right by the ancestors who without them, we wouldn't be here. Mm. And see, and you're living proof that all it takes is hard work and, and you, dedication and you will succeed. It's, it seemed like, um, like Tariq and she's always say, people, you just want someone else to do the work for you while you sit back and relax. And then take all the credit for the work and act like you did all the work and push everybody else you did the work to the side and bury the name so they don't get recognitions for what you stole from them. Right. And that's sort of what I didn't like about Black Panther a little bit. Is no no shot at the actual movie, but what was the shot at the movie? The movie, it just... It, 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 Black, I've never seen black people come out out of the woodwork to watch a Marvel movie. Me either. Like for for this movie, and that same year, it was multiple black movies that came out. Black Klansman came out that year, which I don't like either. But it was other black movies that came out that year, especially from the grassroots community. Right from the grassroots community, and no one came out the woodwork like this. We had we had black celebrities buying out um, movie theaters to go see this movie. I'm like, y'all can't even do that for interim hidden black stuff. We do this for this Disney movie. And makes so bad the movies actually was succeeded, actually succeeding more than um, all Marvel movies until out of nowhere. Look this up. I brought this up before. Look it up. Anybody who's listening, look it up. Robert Downey Jr. put out a tweet 
a, a week before Avengers uh, Infinity Wars was came out. And he told he told uh, Marvel, he tweeted Marvel and said, hey, um, everybody want to see our movie. How about you drop it out a little early? And they literally dropped the movie out a week early because Black Panther came out that same year. And it was literally destroying the box office. Destroying it. And, to, and Robert Downey Jr., I, I'm, I'm about to say it, but he was jealous. I think he was scared that Black Panther was going to be become the the main character of of Marvel movie. Black Panther was the only true best-selling Marvel movie. Well, you know, one thing I learned from the Black Panther movie was this. Black people have the money to make change if they so choose. Okay? They came out in droves, as you clearly articulated. And it just showed me that we have the power money-wise, financial power, to make huge change. Mm-hmm. Um, now, to, add, to answer your question, why they came out in such droves for Black Panther and didn't for Black Klansmen and other Black movies, my honest opinion, and I underline opinion, now, do I believe my opinion is, has truth to it? Yes. And that opinion is this. We, unfortunately, thrive on white validation. Yes. Oh, that's, not okay. big, that's not our biggest weakness. You see? So as long as we know that, uh, you know, the white paymasters and they're okay with it, we have a tendency of going with it and selling the soap for them. Um, you know, because Black Panther, you know, is created by a white character. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Jack Kirby and, you know, of course, Stan Lee. So, so what are we talking about here, really? Typical white Shenanigans. Mm-hmm. What I mean mm-hmm. by that, they will take our stuff, repackage it, mm-hmm. and sell it back to us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm part of a uh, national network of distribute of a comic book publishers across the nation, known as ANIA. We're the National Association of Independent Black Comic Book Publishers. We banded together to create strong black superheroes for our youth to put them in the forefront. Typically, when I was growing up in the 70s, I would read a comic book and I would see a black character in there and he would either be weak or he would be a sidekick of a white character. Mm -hmm. Well, think of what that did to my mind and I think about what it is doing now to the minds of the children right now. That tells me, hey, I am always going to be relegated to the role of a sidekick in this society because I don't have role models. Well, Ania, we have come out here to reverse that image, that stereotype. We have created strong male black superheroes and put them in their own comic book in the forefront so that a black kid can pick it up and say, hey, this guy is cool. And not only he's cool, he's smart. Every single one of our characters, to include Zwana, son of Zulu, Heru, son of Azar, Purge, and Ebony Warrior. These are all four separate heroes. They're all college educated. They did not learn the errors of their ways from the streets, as the mainstream comics would have you believe all the time. They come out to help the community. They clean up the neighborhood. They beat up the crackheads, the skinheads. Uh, they try to promote positive Afrocentric values. Fandom, the ultimate security blanket. So we are the sense of security. Maybe home defense, personal space, finances, or Zillia. You don't want your sense of security violated by anyone or anything. Nobody does. Having security keeps us safe and confident. Fandoms can be considered a form of security because it protects fans from outsiders getting a sense of security and only allow insiders through the community. Fandom can serve as a tool of escapism. Fandom has many benefits, but of course, like all good things, it can be bad for you. To quote the late film critic Robert Ebert in his review of hey. the 2009 film Fanboys, a lot of fans are basically fans of fandoms itself. It's all about themselves. They have Master Star Wars or Star Trek universes or whatever, but their object of ventilations are useful mainly as a backdrop to their own devotion. Anyone who can camp out in a tent on a sidewalk for weeks order to be first in line for a movie is more into camping than they are into movies. Yeah. It's straight fandom. Hold on, Roger, you said that or you said that? No, Robbie, you said that. <laughs> like, I can, I, I can pull up the... I don't know, I said you lying. That's <laughs> funny. That day he went in, boy, he died. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, fuck, I'm a dead man. I'm going to cut Damn. in my throat. Holy oh, shit. <laughs> Extreme fandom may serve as a security blanket for the social inept, who use its extreme social as a substitute for social skills. If you are Luke Skywalker and she's Princess Leia, you already know what to say to each other. It's so much safer than having Ablet 
it. Your fairness or sister is your beard. If you know absolutely all the trivial things about your cubby hole or pop culture, it saves you from having knowing, having to know anything about anything else. That's why it's boring to talk to such people. They always ask questions that they know the answer to. Harsh, but it's truthful. So I'm gonna break down why pe- why I think fandom is a bad circuit breaking and how people use fandom to serve themselves for three means. Mean one, it creates a culture. Mean two, it creates a sense of self. And finally, a sense of potential. It's no secret that most nerds don't fit into other groups due to their quirky or sister nature. They usually cannot relate to mainstream topics such as the latest gossip, sports, pop music, and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they seek to find camaraderie with like-minded peers, building a culture and support system around the love for the art of pop culture. With this, a nerd can use this newfound friendship to form social circles that otherwise would be impossible, quote unquote, to attain outside of pop culture reference. Mm-hmm. There is less effort and use less energy to spend on in your comfort zone. Why expand your mind and broaden your horizon through going out your comfort zone and doing something new and meet? people outside your normal nurse circles where you can where you can endless where you can use your endless supply of the office quotes to create out a conversation with people who too also quote from over overrated TV series. There's comfort and security with being familiar with your environment. There's no need to think on the fly. However, there's one major drawback to this trick. Things will get boring quick. How long until the person you sponsor in Nazi Star Trek quotes and references is going to get tired of it. People are drawn to those who know more than one things, especially if it's outside of pop culture. Yes. Not everyone loves stableness and security. Eventually, you need to disrupt and drop that sense of security of being a fan. Nurse believe that their hobbies, attractions, and interests are small bits of a larger person, a larger picture of who they are as a person. A sort of true self to say. Now, there is some truth to that. And I, I do believe that whatever you are into has an impact on your personality and it reflects on you and your psyche. Mm-hmm. Example, a black nerd may relate to the comic series X-Men due to the elements of racial and racism within the series. The black nerd understands that the X-Men were being treated like outsiders because of their racial background. They might collect figurines of characters such as Storm, Gamut, or Wolverine because to that dumbass black nerd, that's a form of self empowerment that's civil rights <laughs> no it's not it's not to say that these nerds couldn't tap into the spirit for self-empowerment nor do they don't but you must admit that it's good for a grown-ass man to be empowered by fiction and comic books alone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course it's much easier to use somebody else's work to empower yourself than to get off your ass and work on yourself and your purpose to empower yourself without external influence finally Fandom creates a sort of protection. Most nerds who don't have a pair of balls or ovaries got bullied for being nerds. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they create wars and barriers to protect themselves from outsiders. Other nerds may struggle with dealing with real world issues because of fucking Kyrie bitches mm-hmm. or dealt with harshest life, child abuse, sexual abuse, a parent who was absent, social struggles, and so forth. So the fandom is their perfect tool for defense. It's all too common to hear a female say they feel empowered by a magical anime girl series like Sailor Moon or Kalkash Sakura during her youth. You all heard terrors of men who only watch entry level shonen anime who favorite anime is Dragon Ball Z because somehow a cartoon showed them what an alpha man looks like. Or wrestling. Or wrestling. They may not actually put in the work to be alpha as the fictional characters they admire. Hell, they even hate on anime fans who don't live by cursing through short and anime and put in the work to become greater than their fictional icons. They would rather live through the heroes than become like them. Mm. Look at him working out with muscles and stuff. You know what I did? I played 300 hours of, sh- of uh, Shinobi. <laughs> 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 Some shit. I, I binge watched the entire One Piece series. Are you a man? Real men watch One Piece in one day. Real men actually work out to get muscles like Luffy. <laughs> and actually have better adventures than Luffy himself <laughs> because Luffy is a fake character Akite or in Japan they call it Akite so Akite is drinking by Yasumo oh, you gotta tell me what the hell this is, you gotta, oh, this is a, it's a manga? no it's um actually it's a hentai um, really? Film. yes damn I'm but cool. I'm gonna put hentai in. Yeah, put hentai because there are three versions out. The version I got is the quote unquote censor version. Oh, so you got the censor version? Yeah, but Aww. they still show like no tea and sex scenes. The second version is a version where they got the sex scenes, but given this is Japan, the Japan, you know, they be, you know, sexualizing kids. The third version is the full version where they show the female getting fucked while she was like 12, 13 years old mm-hmm. and molested. 
Damn. They show it. Damn. Yeah. Boy, you better be careful. FBI busting your door, <laughs> nigga. So yeah. make sure you get the censored version that came out in 1998. You like niggas, niggas going to stop the fucking podcast, scroll down, <laughs> find a damn DVD. <laughs> you 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 gonna we gonna get a thousand dumb thumbs down because we we didn't see a link to buy it. We just got a video. Y'all ain't show the clitoris. I don't, I don't, thumbs down. What the X videos link? <laughs> so it's it's directed by Yasumo Yumitsu, mm-hmm. who is the he who's a uh, animator for the indie against her. Mm-hmm. He also did a, oh uh, he did yeah he did a, uh, he did ad for uh, Bungo Stray Dogs. Oh he's a current design for. Kokoku Moment by Moment. Oh shit! Yeah, and he's illustrated for uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. I want, I want to look at the DVD. Yeah, he, he's actually like he's because that's my oh, oh that's my company um Studio Genos. I love that shit. Yeah, like he he's a really famous illustrator in the like video game world. He does a lot of illustrations and character designs for games, and he also does a lot of character designs for our anime. Mm-hmm. So this guy is a is a legend. So this is why why everybody told me, like everybody was like yeah you gotta watch Kite because this dude is a fucking beast. I'll mm-hmm. give him that. So for those who don't know what Akite is, it's about this college girl named Sawa who saw her parents, saw her parents get murdered by this assassin. She gets adopted by this corrupt police detective Akai, who trains her to be a killer, and with his homeboy Kanye, who is a hitman for the underground world. So this like one scene where uh, it's really fucker. It's like her first kill. So they are in like a little underground, and this dude chains a wall. So Akai's teaching Sawa how to shoot somebody. He's like, shoot him. He's a pedophile. You know what he does to little girls like you? He kidnapped them, raped them, and after he gets done raping them, he kills them and chopped them up and spread their bodies across Japan. Uh, so the soldier starts shooting the dude and he gets shot. He doesn't feel nothing until you see his face bulging, his chest bulging in, like his brain blows out, his gut starts spinning out his body. Damn. So it just shows how brutal this uh, anime gets. So next scene, it's actually the first scene. So her first kill in the movie is this, this comedian who has been warmer to have uh, sexual relationships with these girls. They use her as a decoy to entrap him. It's him. Sound like hard candy. Yeah, and for, like from watching this movie, you do get like hard candy slash um ultra violent vibes off the show, off this movie. So, but like um she's like kissing him, and this old lady's watching him. It's, he's like, you're so fucking sick. You think because you're a movie star, you can um uh, have any young girls come to your room and guys, hey guys, know what you're gonna do to those girls. Mm-hmm. So dude kicks her to the ground, stops him, and as he's uh, stopping the grandma, Sawa pulls out the gun and blows his brains out. And the granny doesn't think about anything about it until she's regaining conscious, put her glasses on, and sees the body all fucked up, and she has a heart attack and die. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is not a family-friendly anime. Let's come in and watch All right, so after that, um, she meets up with this guy named Ubui who's also an assassin, who's trying to get out of the assassin game. So Ubui... So this is a... A hentai pedophile assassin, assassin anime. anime. Okay, <laughs> that's a weird uh, mix, <laughs> right? Mix, right? <laughs> you know, I'm just watching the hentai assassin <laughs> pedophile anime. <laughs> so go leave me alone, mom. <laughs> <laughs> So Obuyi, he he tells her that he knows who killed her parents, and she's like, I know who killed my parents, but you don't know who until later on. So Doctor Moon, there's a whole bunch of cool ass fight scenes, and the best one is Sara is assigned to assassinate these two actors who are Trim Brothers. So you see these two Trim Brothers taking a piss in the boss bathroom. They're surrounded by like four bodyguards, and you see Sara in a stall dressed like a guy. As the Trim are taking a piss, you see Sara kick down the door and shoots one of the brothers. The other brothers start peeing on himself and start freaking out. The bodyguard grabs her, throws her a choco, but she's doing like this really cool flick, but like she uh, breaks out the choco and she's like shoot the guys point blank in the face. Mm. But she gets tackled to like the uh, stall, and like you know how in a way they had a little a little stall fight where uh, dudes like fight to do the stalls, mm-hmm. just like that. He started fighting the stalls, but what happened was um dudes like one dude close the door and try like shoot her through the door, but um as he started to shoot her through the door, his hands exposed. Well, he didn't know that uh she actually shot while she was like uh doing some hand to hand combat shit. He like put a bomb on his hand. And like, as soon as he tried to put the trigger, the bomb exploded. Damn. And she just saw blasting dude through the door. Mm-hmm. So she thinks she's done fighting these guys until like this one bodyguard like rushed her against a glass window and they fall like 80 feet. And while they're all uh, falling, you, you see like a little cutscene again of her, you know, her past, like how her parents got killed and how she is getting changed as a killer. So you know how I say she knows a killer? Her mom's her, her mom dad's killer? It flashed back to a don't, shooter. Don't spoil the uh, ending. Don't spoil the ending. My bad, my bad. Well, you know who kills her, her parents, but. Okay. So it goes back to uh, Ratty, and they land on this dude's uh, car, and the car sinks down to a underpass, not underpass, but um, street level, into like a gas tanker. And they blow up. Somehow she survived the uh, explosion, and like she got crashed into like this dude's um, 
apartment building. So after that, you see Aiki in his um, cop job investigating the um, crime scene. So she fucked up and dropped a gun. And dude was like, oh shit, that's a gun. And guy like, and put in his jacket. And he was like, man, I hope we find some evidence to link to this killer because this is so cr- this, this person is fucking crazy. Now he sits up. So he and his homeboy are looking over where, you know, they had a fight. And he's like, man, girl, you're so lucky. And dude was like, what? What girl? And he's like, oh, no, no, I'm going to think of myself. So next thing was, I think it was like one of the best scenes. Um, it is the end, but I'm trying not to like sports much. So you find out that somebody has been playing chess with the whole group and fuck everybody over. And that's all I'm going to say. Why you should always do your research when it comes to creators. So Tiny to Nana, I was not going to watch it. Until I saw the people behind, well, not behind the um, because one person. So while I was looking for who was with this staff, I saw a, a person named that kind of, not kind of, but maybe would he wanted to watch Tanatanana. So this person's name is Fumihiko Shimo, and for those who don't know, he, he or she wrote Er Kalan, Fakes a Night, Higurashi, Yumineko, and currently they're also writing for Ikibukuro with Skate Park, and he they also wrote the story for the movie The Disappearance of Hori Zumiya. If I did not look in who was behind the writing of Tanatanana, I probably when I had to watch it because I was I was like man this is my hero knockoff I ain't watching this yeah. shit and then he told me when I saw well, actually I saw Ben make a post on Facebook with um, Butcher and a girl like same energy I'm like what <laughs> really and like okay I'm about to and then ben, ben, ben told me about it. I'm like oh shit I'm like oh no I'm down yeah I watched that shit Push I'm like I'm down I watched episode two and three and like oh oh no no she trying to kill people yeah. she killing motherfuckers she she's like. She trying to be a serial killer, nigga. She's like, what? <laughs> All right, well, knock out two niggas and do one more. I'm like, God damn, girl, you just don't give a fuck, huh? Like I said, going through Tanatanana's staff list, and I saw who wrote the story. I was like, okay, this might be good, because no, he, if this film, he, he called the girl, whatever. Whoa, some really good anime series. And he knows how to make a good adaptation out of a manga. Except for you, Minico, when they cry, because that anime, that actual was fucking garbage. So I don't get these fucking cornballs on YouTube. Facebook it was like, well, it doesn't matter. Why, why, why would you be looking at the fucking director? Because it's called a fucking track record. Yeah. If they have a good track record, yes, I'm going to fuck them. Right. If I know the known for bullshit, why the fuck am I going to fucking waste my time waiting for a sucking to get good? Man, all you got to say to that person is, you, you know, are a retard. No, do you know who Quentin Tarantino is? Yeah, you watched everything he dropped, right? You don't just watch everybody's shit, but you know when you hear that name, like, oh, well, I don't think yeah, so, oh, shit, this cool. going to be banger. Shit, going to be some good shit. Like, and, like, that's the reason why people follow directors of movies like Christopher Nolan, all the all the people I named the normal heroes, all those white directors that people yeah. love. That's why people love those people, motherfuckers, because they usually drop good movies. You don't have no niggas in it, but they still make good movies. Like, don't be a dummy and just be watching everything. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not smart. You're actually just confusing yourself. You're yeah. just going to be sort of hating television. Like, oh, well, that was a waste of time. Well, nigga, if you looked who wrote <laughs> and directed it, you wouldn't have wasted your time. Because it's halftime. You're like, who the fuck is this director? Who is this writer? I, I might fuck with you if you have an actor I like in it. Yeah. But even the actor, sometimes I'm like, I know you yeah, did yeah. a fucked up movie the last time. I don't no, know. No, you work with an unknown director and that kind of almost fucked your career up. Like I was talking to somebody like a, uh, a couple of months ago about some anime director. I don't know who his name is. I'm like, because some anime yeah, was coming out of it. People were talking about like, I'm, this director, he's infamous for fucking up adaptions. And people are like, no, why, that, why does not matter? Because again, I know this guy has a history of horrible shows i am not gonna waste my time watching this anime because it be part of the discussion in the group you, okay like we've been saying this for months a year even please look up these directors these producers especially when it comes to anime because you can't watch all that shit in anime man sometimes that shit be like god damn this is some shit yeah but you don't know no better that's when because you, you do gotta look at the track record of some, not even the anime directors the production companies because sometimes directors they you know they, they work for like production IP, yeah like you know the, the next year because if I have a friend who works for, you know, A1 Pictures, and like, hey, right. I need somebody with your talent to bring this anime, this manga that you know, to life. Like, like A1. Uh, I'm about to say, like this new director, Sun Jung Park, who created uh, uh, God of High School, but now Mappa just like, well, what's good? Can you direct? Um, he directed another. Jujutsu Kaisen, I think he did. He's directing that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, they in this career, and they can direct. He must be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Doing good. Because the, the last episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, that shit was like, well animated. I was like, Damn, fuck! And God of High School, everybody know God of High School. That's a dope ass intro. That's one. I think that's the best intro of the year. That mm-hmm. hype ass fucking song. God damn, might have to play it at the end. Yeah. But, uh, and you know, I was going to completely ignore um, the day I became a god. But like I say, I look up the director, and the director is. Let me look him up. 
he is following the studio key um it's a it's a yeah, so your key is a real well known, popular, beloved virtual novel company who made uh, okay. So it's June, the guy behind the, the day of come gone, God June Maida, who I believe he's a founder of key. This dude created Connor, Er, Angel Beast, kind of as a story. This guy is a fucking legend, and he's really known for creating stories behind like creating stories where the main focus is by family, knowing who you are, keeping bonds with your friends. And actually making Lightheart start dark. Yeah, that's why I like uh, old boy, the creator of Cobb Bebop. Well, the director of Cobb Bebop. What's on, what's on Nabe? Yes, Shinaro, Watanabe. Yeah, that's why I, I fuck everything he do. Yeah. Like, that dude, he actually gives he actually gives a fuck about anime. He see anime as an art. And he like, I'm not going to just keep adapting mangas. He do some real new shit. And he loves music. He, he loves Western culture. And that's why some of his stuff is, is very unique, like, like, yeah. To the, I said they, uh, I told you guys this year about Kabi Bob. Kabi Bob, ain't nobody never touched that ever again. Like, no. like ain't nobody doing nothing like Kabi Bob, man. And it still look good, beautifully day, drawn. Like, you buy some stupid ass kids saying, no, "Oh, they look bad," but then try to be no, try to be the cool kids. Yeah, right. Kabi Bob do not look bad. Ain't no bad shots of Kabi Bob. Yeah. Like, fuck out of here. That's a movie production type shit. Like, that is something on another goddamn level. That's why you'll never see that shit ever again. Not. Ever, ever. <laughs> Might close close to that, probably you say Carolina Tuesday type shit. You know. It's funny because they are in the, same, in the same universe. Yeah, just like Space Danny, they they they, they talk about Wulongs. Like, oh shit, this got to be way in the future of uh, of uh, because they got some nutty shit in Space <laughs> Danny. Like, that's why you you need to always do your research for these crackers because you don't know what they have produced that will grab your attention and make you more interested in something else that you wouldn't know. Uh, hey, let's go into the topic though. That talking about the switch and all that video game, game preservation. I am happy that these game companies are realizing that people do love the older games. Yeah, that's great. However, some companies, Nintendo, is being goofy with preserving the games. So as you know, Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and Blade Light, and Super Mario Bros. All Stars, 3D All Stars, is going through you know the little bit of this thing. But they're also doing a decent ball check where, you know, after March 31st, you cannot get those games anymore. They should realize that, hey, people do have some form of interest in these older games. People, usually the whole car gamers, they like the history of gaming. They want to explore what their favorite character for a game was. So let's, let's say some kid today grew up playing Super Mario Galaxy, but they never played the first one. So they go on Nintendo SNES Switch Online. And well, well, no, you can't get on there. You have to pay for Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, yeah. Online, <laughs> which is 20 bucks. Then you can then, then play. play. If you have an online connection. Right. So instead of you know, doing the smart thing with the day with the um, Wii Shop back in the day, where you could just buy the game, download it, one time deal, be done with it. You got to spend 20 dollars a month. Then go on, then download an app. Then stay on it, stay online for the app to play those games. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Well, no, actually, you don't. You don't have to be online to go play Switch Online. You I think you have to. No, you can. Um, you have to at least have it hooked to your um Switch like every thirty days, something like that, just to get a ping back. Like, okay, you're on the internet, and this is you still. Uh-huh. but you can do it every like thirty days. Just have it hooked to the internet. So I, you can't do that. Oh well, shit. I, I, you, know, you just have to be on the internet, but no. Nintendo, like, how Nintendo's gonna be the like the major player gaming, but they don't want to preserve the games like. In a more respectful matter. Well, I mean, people. Gonna, the simple thing is, they it's money. Yeah. Why true. would they? I mean, it sort of is an industry of people making money on Nintendo shit, and Nintendo don't really give a shit about making their own games. Cause I said this in a previous episode, people really don't give a shit about old games. Like they tested it out, people don't give a shit. We people bitch and complain about it, but. No one used it. No yeah. one used it for the PS3. Um, people, it, it's more like a, a side benefit. Like, oh, thanks. Like, and it can play my old games. That's the only thing it is. It's nothing. It's a, it's a consumer friendly move. Mm. That's all it really is. It's nothing, you know, viable for letting you play PS2 games when, you know, Sony can just remake that PS2 game and sell it to you for 60 bucks and make all their money back. I mean, that's true. Really it. I mean, this is why I can think, but I understand what you're going at. Yeah. So, like, I'm liking, you know, like, these companies, like, they do realize, hey, people do like the old games, and the old games should be remastered, and built for, or, worst case scenario, built from the ground up again, with something new, like, more quality of life stuff. Like, Atlas, Shimmy Gun Tensor 3, like, that's a groundbreaking game. That's an iconic game. But yeah, like, 
I was, like I say, like I like the idea of people personal their games, but flood companies again, they just know it's going to end up on Ray. But yeah, Nintendo, they just notorious. They're never going to remake those games, man. Like no matter what. So like I said, those, out of all those console people, you better keep them the Nintendo yeah, systems because they're not never going to. Like you see how long it took to get Fire Emblem fucking um, Shadow Dragon. Right. The fuck? On English. And they can't even put it on a cart. It's so fucking late. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Like, ah, well, we'll give you a collector's edition, but we'll give you a digital download for the game. Like, damn, nigga, well, yeah. shit ain't gonna be worth shit. People want the game. <laughs> the fuck? They want the actual copy. Now you just gave some Japanese motherfucker to make a, a fake Switch cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> shit. To go with this shit. Goddamn. How you can preserve it is just you keeping your systems, man. Yep. I mean, it's for Or there. dumping the ROM file online and hopefully people will fuck with it. But it's still, it still, it doesn't play the same. Yeah, it's just playing on the damn system. What the fuck nobody say? It does not feel the same. You gotta have your shit specced right just to play a fucking Super Nintendo game or, or a goddamn 64 game. The hell, they can't even get a PS3 game working on the goddamn and shit. You got these dumbass motherfuckers think that's all smart saying, well, why do you just play an emulator and play it on your phone? Like, TV girls say, you gotta, you got to adjust your computer. Like, the average consumer don't know how to actually adjust the computer. They just play the computer and just thinking. Because it's not about what you really supposed to use a computer for. Yeah. It's like hacking fucking Super Mario Bros. Something shit like that. Right, like, come on now. Yeah, you goofy shit. the wrong way. These niggas working hard as possible to play 3DS games on the goddamn computer. Lose and sleep to play fucking Zelda, the first one on some on regular Nintendo or a smartphone. Like and just Nintendo, so you got bragging and rights. Nintendo see that you remember when Nintendo did that um that thing on the internet where they took down all the ROM sites? Yep. Game more expensive. Especially Nintendo. When it comes to just wanting to play older games. The danger of FOMO. Mm. Fear of missing out. So this topic came to me because um it no this run of Super Mario 3D All Stars and these new consoles, people are the most goofy ass shit to not miss out. Mm-hmm. Going as far as robbing motherfuckers or setting up scoppers to get robbed because they're mad because they couldn't get the game or the consoles. Mm-hmm. And also I'll be seeing on Facebook from people just be hating on people who got the new consoles. Mm-hmm. Seeing goofy shit like all that money couldn't be used you know, to get, get your own land or get your own business. You you stupid. <laughs> Deep down, I wish I had it. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> this hype shit gonna get y'all niggas fucked up. Don't let people project their FOMO on you, so you can go out and do some fuck shit just to get a console. Right? Because you don't want to miss out, right. or the other person don't want to miss out. and want to make you feel bad because you're not missing out and you're immune to FOMO. Yeah, it's, it's just I ain't never been like that since I was, since I was a kid, man. Yeah, I never like. Needed the latest clothes, shoes. Video. Like, well, I did want like latest video game, but I didn't get it to you know, be part of the conversation of that shit. That's usually yeah. what it is: being part of the conversation. conversation pretty wanna, much. Want to talk about with everybody. I got a few points. The first point is like one of the main dangers of uh, FOMO is reckless behavior. Yeah. Because people that are having risk of their lives, money, help to not miss out. Doing reckless shit just to not miss out. One of the main dangers of the FOMO shit is. People just act so emotional. They don't logically think. Don't think, okay, what am I really missing out on? Or is it, does it really matter that if I am not a part of the conversation? Again, people just get so, they just get so emotional. They just do stupid shit just to be a part of the conversation. Another danger of FOMO is envy. Mm. Not even jealousy, envy. Because everybody gets jealous, but envy is, that's worse. Mm. When you envy, you do fuck shit. Mm. Just to not mess out. So people had this hated mentality and say, you know, you got a PS5. And some just hated them like it. So they go break your you house. Suck, you suck five dicks for that, so <laughs> who cares? It's like, no, I say five grand. I'm not grand. Five hundred dollars. Probably. Just for that, check. I'm to do a giveaway. Who wants a free one? <laughs> yeah, like fucking, they got people hating on motherfuckers because they got it first. I'll super troll them I'll be like, hey, you, I'm sorry, man. You, I, I'm mad you feel jealous. You know what? I got an extra PS5. Send me your address. <laughs> I'll send you one and do <laughs> PS5 in a box with some shit in it, you know? <laughs> no, it's, it's PS5. It's like <laughs> five PS1s <laughs> taped together. <laughs> He got placed some five percent on it. No, it's gonna be a, a used condom with semen in it. It's gonna be a note on saying just completed on your mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, like, so, you know, when people get envious, don't so hack. Start to talk to some motherfuckers who got shit, so they probably just sit somewhere else and rob because they can have the PS5. So if I can have it, why can you? It's not fair. Next danger is on uh, FOMO, it destroys your patience. If you rush in to get something, you are destroying your patience. Mm-hmm. You have to have a skill in life. Yeah. You need to learn how to wait. 
and do something with its higher rating. And my last point on the danger of it is you lose appreciation of what you have. It divides what you already done or have. And you can't look at things other angles like, like I said earlier, like it's really important to just have a thing right there now. Mm-hmm. Like in the way, it's really all that. Mm-hmm. Because of, you know, with these PS5s, you know, all these consoles are a fucking brick. Mm-hmm. You got a drinking one. Because because you were so scared of being left behind and missing out that you mm-hmm. spent 600 plus dollars on fucking brick. And people put in so much time and work to something that can't even help them out. Like, that's oh. what fucks me up. Not even the consoles, because a lot of people, man, they got to be hip to everything. They, they got to be up to date on the most dumbest shit. That don't even mm-hmm. matter. First step, think logically. Like, say, you no, know, like I say, earlier, like to yourself, do I really need this console? Mm-hmm. Why am I upset I can't get this shit? Uh, also, you know, asking yourself, you know, is it worth being upset over? Like, is it worth all that energy for you to get mad because you're missing out? That's fucking stupid. Next step, you got to build your patience. Always wait and keep so busy mm-hmm. while you're waiting. Yeah. One of my favorite characters on um, this TV show that I love, number one show of all time, Lost. Um, his name is Benjamin Linus. Um, one of my favorite characters of television. He's a uh, master manipulator. But you know, one of his biggest traits is patience. This man had an abusive father who beat him and got drunk and shit. And he waited until he was 20 years old on his birthday. And every birthday, his dad, his dad, uh, he basically stopped loving him because the day he was born, his mom died. She's like, died giving birth to him and shit. So he sort of looked at his son like he was the person who killed my love. And so he patiently waited and he killed his daddy. A great deal of patience. So Gaten died. Jesus <laughs> Christ. It was dark as fuck. And his dad was calling it. I'm like, what are you doing? Just as I possibly can. And last point is, do something that others haven't. If you don't mess out, do I am doing some people happy. I'm sucking dick, bitch. No, no, <laughs> no. no, no. no. That, that's way too different. <laughs> that's way too <laughs> that's way different. Why am I doing such shit? You do something different. Like, you know, motherfuckers, you know, go to Amicon. You can't make it. Fucking stacking money, go to Japan. Like, mm-hmm. fuck. <laughs> shit, like, shit that, on that, them. Push, right, shit on them. Actually, yeah. if you got FOMO, don't let it control you. This guy on Facebook talk about how he can't stand people who talk about they didn't go to college and how they more made their life better by going to college. And he's talking about, yeah, you, I don't know why you guys talk about, you know, you guys so proud of not going to college. I'm to college. I'm doing better than you. But he was honest because projecting his envy because people He's were, failing in college. Right? Yeah, people were G-checking him like a motherfucker saying, like, I went to college. It was not good for me. I have a worse of my anxiety and it snowballed to a somewhat similar topic. If So I did community college. TV girl did trade school. I dropped out of college after I realized how I honestly like doing shit outside school like traveling talking to people as opposed to going to a room for two hours it's kind of worth it yeah kind of worth it then it depends on where you're going to college for or what you do for your listen life if you're going to like a professional like bring your directing you want to be a doctor a lawyer something that requires you to actually go through your schooling i say it's worth it well no i would say doctor lawyer you can you can do that shit on a computer i mean all you're doing is reading textbooks (laughs) I, you, I mean, you got to practice law, yeah. you know, but that's after you get the degree. That's one of, to me, that's a great area. You could, you could go to work for a law office as a secretary and ask yeah. them, hey, can you teach me the game of law? Mm-hmm. And it might teach you the game. Might tell you, you got to go to school to get your degree, but they will probably teach you. Yeah, you got to get a degree, yeah. but you can, like I said, you can do that shit at home. I, I'm, we're saying going to actual physical college, yeah. going there, buying books, getting in the dorm, all that shit. No. If you have a strong work ethic and you know what you want to do with your life, don't go to college. Just go get a job and learn that industry through actually working through that industry at yeah, the bottom. Yeah. Like, I don't get I don't get motherfuckers who go to corning school where you can go to a restaurant, work as a dishwasher, and work your way up to, like, prep cook and show cook. I'm going to tell you how this game is, this college game is. I'm to college, right? My boss dropped out of high school, and he's making $80,000 a year Damn. as a chef. Damn. But well, he got to be white. No, he's, you know, he's, a, he's an Asian motherfucker. Like Asian? So, like, really? Still, still. Oh, niggas, they can pass them in. They don't have to say shit. He's, <laughs> I'm Asian, duh. Uh, I, you don't have to ask me about my degrees. I, this nigga probably say, I'm an astronaut. He like, oh, <laughs> come on in. Shit, you're an astronaut. <laughs> you're Asian. Shit, I mean, of course you are. You're smart. He's a whole heroin addict. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who, I mean, who, who in the science industry isn't on something? <laughs> <laughs> shit. You can't be a chef without smoking weed. Shit. You like think it. Gordon Ramsay don't smoke weed? That's the reason why they don't do a test in the, um, in the restaurant industry. So okay. for all the kids, for all you kids who smoke weed a lot, mm-hmm. we're working no strong. We don't need never drug tests <laughs> because fashion people and worship people are fucking crazy. Wait, college, I mean, if you want to go through that stress and get anxiety and depression, go for it. Especially mm-hmm. us. College, college is like being a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
You work endlessly for three months, go through depression for a whole year. Because you don't know what you're going to do in life. Is this, is this all? Am I good enough? <laughs> yep. But I would say also, I, mean, I would say, so I get some college. I get college some great. Like, one of the best things you can do about college is networking. The more you network with people, the more you connection you make. Like, basically kicking it with people. You got to yeah. kick it with people, man. You got to socialize. You got You have to learn how to. That's why, I'm like, I understand you can go to a party without smoking and drinking and all that shit, but you still got to kick it with people. Like, you like, can't be, be sitting in the crib. I remember going to hang out with the uh, theater kids because I was bored and I had nothing to do. And one of the theater kids who was actually an art student was talking about Amy Cons. And she was like, yeah, this, oh, this, is a con- this is a convention company called Amy St. Louis. If I didn't nick work with the theater kids, I would not know about Amy Cons. You know, you know when we go to Amy Cons, this is why, like, Amy Cons is the reason why I got inspired to talk about, you know, nurse shit on a more deeper intellectual level. So there are benefits of, you know, going to college, talking to people, because you, you don't know who you're going to meet that will actually change your life and by, help you find your purpose. I'm not saying college is an NRB all for that shit, but you th- all think about going to college, I mean, at the most, try to network with people. Now, don't go to college for a trade, like plumbing. What You said don't go to college for, for a trade? For a trade? Yeah, because there are some colleges that do like trade school and shit. Like, that's. Get a trade. You can tell me no, 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 they had the shit. <laughs> like, I just recommend just go just go there. And then you actually, you got to live there and you stuck there. So ain't you you can't have no fuckery around you. Because, yeah, you can go to school in your local town or whatever. But then you got your outside life where, you know, your friends can get you influenced and fuck you up. So I just I always recommend if you do go to school, college or trade school, go outside of your town. Yeah, There's a trade school in St. Louis that we call Reagan. And they are fucking strict. They make you wear uniforms that's based off the job choice. Mm-hmm. And what, what I heard, if there's like there's a wrinkle on your shirt, they will kick you out for the week. I like that kind of schooling because, I mean, it actually prepares you for the real world. I like college. Yeah, you could get mad because, you know, your teacher, your trade school, so you leave for the rest of the week because your fucking clothes is wrinkled. But it puts you down my mindset, like, I gotta take this seriously. This is a career. College is, you know, you can't come in. You can come in wearing pajamas, a fucking t-shirt, slippers. Mm-hmm. You do that at trade school, they will fucking chew your ass out. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's, that's what's gonna prove how college is bullshit. Uh-huh. Like, why you let these young adults who still got a child's mi- mindset come to class wearing a fucking sweatpants, slippers, and an oversized t-shirt? Where can they find Yugi? You can find me on my website, yugitastorman.com. You can find me on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Yugi. You can the snowman on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can find me at Yuki, the snowman 314. And you can hit up my cash out. My cash up is dollar sign Benjamin A. Snow. You want to find me? I'm on YouTube at Dark Dreams Bright Ideas. I'm on Twitter at Super Lost Fan 108. I'm on Instagram at the TV Guru 108. You can find my cash up down in the description below. We see you guys and gals in the next one. Later.